Welcome back to the TowerCast podcast, the towering podcast for the towering filmmaker of El Paso in the world. We are at the Las Cruces International Film Festival, and we have a very special guest on the podcast right yes, now. But before do. I introduce the special guest, I got to introduce my fellow co-host, Mr. John Eric Castle. How are you guys doing? Still here? <laughs> uh, giving us an acting perspective, Mr. Michael Lello. Excited to keep it going. Day three, and... I think we still got one more. Am I wrong? Wait, day. No, you're right. I don't know when day We've been doing this. For, we've been doing this for three <laughs> know, years. Um, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, giving us a cinematography perspective. I'm your humble film servant, Carlos Alatorre, giving you a writing directing perspective. Thank you to Austin Young, making sure we're sounding good in the back there. And uh, <clears throat> without further ado, uh, this man, we, we met him last year. He's, yes, we we always just kind of shoot the shit and just, just talk, and, and it's always fun. But we never had him on the podcast because they always pull him in every other direction. But um, today's the day. <laughs> today's the day. We have the amazing Ed. Stone, screenwriter, actor. I mean, you've seen him in something. You've seen some of his work. If you haven't seen Pause of Fury, go check out Pause of Fury. It's actually screening right now at the Las Cruces International Film Festival. Yeah, what are you doing if you haven't seen this kind of Mel Brooks remake thing that's really awesome? Uh, but we'll get into that. So, Ed, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Um, I'm not Ed Stone. I mean, I may be in the wrong place. Oh, man. Could so be in the wrong totally place. Yeah, 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 we'll well, next room. Next room. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to improvise, man. I don't know what to tell you. No, so happy to be here. I, awesome. We tried so hard last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I know. I know so we crazy. had... We we had your your fellow friend and oh, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh William H Macy was yeah. here. Ron me Rob Minkoff. The Minkoff like was yeah, like yeah, yeah. you know obviously worked together on this on a couple of things right yeah, but yeah, this particular so uh, he he took your hour man he was here for he gave us like you know almost two hours. Directors are so selfish. Directors are so selfish. So you never became a, <laughs> uh, so the biggest thing we kick off the podcast with is how did your journey as a storyteller begin? Tell us a little bit about uh, yeah, 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 what yeah, made yeah, you want to yeah. become a storyteller. Uh, and summarize it in two words, if you don't mind. <laughs> two words. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Meet girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of the podcast. Uh, yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, guys. Good night. <laughs> See you later. Uh, uh, how did it begin? No, no. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, uh, I mean, like a lot of people, you start out being the class clown, right? And you start mm. challenging the teacher, like, oh, I dare you to try and cover and up top me. me or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Don't top me. But uh, uh, I, was always, I was always happy to disappear into stories, always happy to disappear into books. Uh, after high school, I worked as a disc jockey for about 12 years. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, a lot like local radio stations. Uh, yeah, or? radio stations. Uh, I, uh, yeah, my first was in Tucumcari, New Mexico, then Artesia, wow. New Mexico, then uh, Greeley, Colorado, Denver, Colorado, Lubbock, wow. Plainview, Texas, Albuquerque. Dang, man. Uh, yeah. Which one was your favorite? My favorite? Uh, my favorite was when I saw them in the rear view mirror. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, so fellow New Mexican. You were born and yeah, raised yeah, in uh, 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 Yeah. I, uh, uh, born in Kansas City. Moved here uh, as oh, a one-year-old. Uh, graduate of Tucumcari High School. Tucumcari, New mm. Mexico. Stop and get gas on the way to Amarillo. <laughs> uh, what is the way they say? It's uh, it's uh, about two miles past resume speed is where you get <laughs> to carry. And I uh, graduated from New Mexico State University right here in Las Cruces. Wow. Nice. Uh, studied theater and then uh, went to L.A. to be a famous actor. Uh, and see. became a famous dog walker and bartender. <laughs> that was it. For a while. <laughs> for a while. For a while. I mean, that, I, we're, we're, we're from El Paso, so just yeah, kind of yeah, a yeah. throw from, from Las Cruces, New Mexico, and just all the, all the production. How, how does it feel? coming back and seeing the boom <laughs> first of all i came here last year for the first time in like yeah. 30 years whoa, oh, wow. whoa. and are you based in la now i live in la, okay, I live in LA. Oh, okay, okay. and um and i didn't recognize el paso or las cruces either one and it used to be you drive to el paso to, for a good time when i was going to school here <laughs> yeah. and you would be nothing and then anthony and then nothing and uh, then el paso and really? now it's one long yeah it's all connected yeah, yeah, yeah. it's crazy right i don't recognize anything recognize now what about the the kind of the filmmaking aspect of it all right like what what i'm sure that climate has changed since you were last year in, in oh my god like yeah that. well i mean when i first started working in film i mean the, the talkies hadn't arrived yet that was that was a big <laughs> that was a really big thing and then black and white to color was kind of <laughs> crazy oh so chaplin <laughs> what, what was <laughs> that like? god he was a real son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> but the ladies loved him. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, it, it's changed. It's, it's changed a ton. And the weird thing is, and one of the things we're telling people at the festival right mm. now is that there is never on planet Earth been a better time to be in the entertainment business than right now because sure. there's so many avenues for <laughs> yeah. you to get involved, so many places to go get work, and and things like gaming and animation are growing exponentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, if you if you want a job and you put in the work, you you can work. Right. Yeah. So right, that's really yeah. exciting. Yeah. And look, when I started doing film, you had to go to one of the coasts because you had to have film. Uh -huh. You had to have film uh -huh. camera. You had to have all that equipment. So going to LA, it sounded like at first predominantly we were pursuing acting. Yeah, right? yeah I, went, so I went and studied acting. I, I studied acting here, and I went there and. Uh, 
did some theater, uh, started getting little parts and, you know, little under five parts in mm-hmm. movies and TV shows. Uh, but I was going crazy because when you work all the time doing theater, when you're a part of a big, you're there from the first day and the last day. Yeah, yeah. And I hated, I hated showing up, mm. you know, for one day, not knowing anybody, yeah. not being a part of the process. And, but the great thing, and I tell people this all the time, if you want to be in the entertainment, get on sets. Yeah. Get yeah, on sets yeah. because you might look around and go, that job over there looks mm, way more yes. interesting to me yeah. than yeah. what I'm doing. And that's what happened. I was looking at like the producers and the writers, directors going, well, they're the ones having the fun. They're the ones on the first day and the last day. And like, yeah. I want to do that. So I started writing scripts. Wow. What what, what year was this more or less when you were kind of out there? You, you were doing the acting for a little bit, but how, how, what are we looking at? Uh, Nineteen. <laughs> it was right after World War II, 1945. <laughs> uh, no, I, so I moved out there in 1990. 90, okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is kind of also the, the start, the rise of the indie boom. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and the thing was, I, I kind of my career kind of started right at the end of the indie boom, oh, which was, I, I was so upset about because, <laughs> uh, you know, when I when I was first when I made my first movie, there was probably 21 indie places you could mm. go oh. to sell. And since then, as you guys know, the studios have bought all the indie right, places. Right, so right, now right. the studios only. And yeah, the, any mil- film, you could get all your buddies the right, and make the, a movie. Yeah, yeah. And now, when you go to Sundance, if you don't have Ryan Gosling in the movie, you, 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 can't, you yeah. can't have a movie there. And it's just, it's ridiculous and it's sad. Yeah. And that's why streaming's big, because that's where the indie movement's gone. Right. The indie yeah. movement's gone over there. It's a streaming. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, now, now I'm just... Rallying off the no, 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 that's great. That's great. We really need a cocktail, and that yeah, would be so much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I always, I always got to ask. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, why did you start acting? Was there a movie, an actor, a director, or somebody who, like, inspired Dude, you? You know, you know, when I was acting, when I was here, when I was studying theater and stuff like that, uh, you know what? I, my parents will tell you, first of all, I got kicked out of school all the time for acting up. But when I was at home, I was in my room, door closed, reading books, Playing figurines, making soldiers do it. You know, I was, yeah. I, was yeah, yeah, yeah. I was creating my own creating world. Stories, yeah, man. I was creating my own world. Yeah. And then, um, and then of course, you know, the, on Saturdays when you got your allowance, I would just be in the movie theater um, all day, mm. going, you know, I want to be, I want to live over there. I yeah. want to be in that thing over there. Yeah. You know, and it's one of those things like they ask you sometimes in interviews, like, you know, what's your biggest regret? And you go, oh, just pretty much the way I live my life. That's my biggest regret, you know, <laughs> from my entire life. Yeah, yeah. And so I wanted to be in the movies. I wanted to be. Wanted to be inside of that. And so, uh, and the other thing is, uh, my family was not close. My family was not close at all. And when you're doing a show, yeah. you, you have a family. You've created a family. Sure, yeah, and it was sure, like a yeah. really happy place to yeah. be, you know. And one of those things where when something goes wrong, everybody pitches in to fix it, yeah. which was the opposite of home, right? Mm. The opposite of home. And so it became wow. like the happy place. You just I, found that connection. In yeah, the world, yeah. Right? And I don't mean to get so deep no, no, and everything, no, but, but, that's, but that's it. Right? That's it, was more, it was more the pursuit of that emotion as opposed to like, I want to be like Brandor. Oh, be like no, this no, something. no. I just, I just wanted to be part. Of, I wanted to be part of something. Yeah. I wanted to yeah. be, you know, and the weird thing is, and then I become a writer, so I'm sitting alone in my house all day long. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, but know, but there's writers, shorts, right? no, it's great perspective because there's writers, there's some writers who genuinely enjoy that. Here's a script. If it's greenlit, oh, bye yeah. bye, we'll see. I'll get my residuals later and we'll talk. But there's other actors who are like, I want to be on set from day one to day six. Yeah, yeah. Nine. Like, it sounds I, like that's more you. Like, I, I, I really, I love, I feel so lucky to be a writer. I love writing, but I write to be on the set and making the movie because mm-hmm. I want to, you know, I want you want to share, you know, it's a collaborative business. You want to mm-hmm. get back yeah, to the yes. collaboration. Now, so. by that same token, you never, uh, you know, you never wanted to pursue directing. Oh, or, I directed a movie. What's, what's, what's going on here? Wait, 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 Jesus God. No, I, so I directed a movie called Griffin and Phoenix with okay. Dermot Mulroney and Amanda Peet. We're in the leads. Oh. And um, shot in New York, oh gosh, 2007. It was really, really hard. Low budget yeah. in New York City is New really, York, yeah, really yeah, hard. Why? So why did you, who, who chose New York? <laughs> well, I, I chose New York because, <laughs> why did I chose New York? <laughs> uh, because you know what? Uh, uh, did you just talk to Kevin Reynolds? Was yeah. he around? Mm-hmm. So Kevin taught me something a long, long time ago because I gave him a script. And he goes, how come every script that I read starts middle of the desert, you know, southwestern? He goes, mm. why don't you start writing scripts like places we can go visit? Like, why don't uh-huh. you say, like, you, <laughs> know, you know, you know, fade in a beach in Italy. Let's go make right. the movie there. <laughs> and so I think I was right. I was like, wow, why don't we go spend a couple of months in New York City? That'd be amazing. And we'll get somebody to give us per diem and we'll hang out. <laughs> you know, it'll be great. But uh, New York was a great backdrop because it was a really backdrop, it was yeah. a really kind of intimate 
love story. Mm-hmm. Okay. And but New York kind of gave us that kind of. Who did you make the picture with? Cast and and then uh, was yeah. the studio backing it? No, no, it was, uh, it was a deep. Gold Circle Films, Gold that, Circle. and they had uh, they made all their money on Big Fat Greek Wedding. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. And so, well, talk about indie boom. I mean, they they that oh, was an indie. They were right on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so anyway, uh, uh, got we got Dermot, we got Amanda Pete, uh, we got this really great supporting cast, Blair Brown, and like all these great supporting Blair. actors, mm. uh, and we went. Super low, super low budget. So we were just grabbing and going and grabbing and going. Yeah. Uh, but it came out really nice little film. I'm really, really had a good time. Really proud of it. Uh, a lot of directors, like Kevin yesterday, was like, "Well, you know how it goes." He tells me he's like, "You're a director. You're on set, and you know, two weeks into being on set, you're like, I never want to do this again because you're so stressed." And I, then you wrap the film, and you're like, "All right, I love it. Let's do it again." Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, I know, like, I know. So it sounds like you made the film, and then you you kept just. Writing or did you no, want to no, continue no. You know, directing? What was so it? Speaking of, speaking of Kevin Rose, you know, he told me something a long time ago. He says every movie you make is like a family vacation. Did he t- say this to you? No. <laughs> every movie you make is a family vacation. You start out with like thinking about oh, all the amazing just, things you're gonna do and all the fun yeah. you're gonna have, and by the end of it, I just want to get the fuck <laughs> that, home. Yeah, that's I just want to go home, man. That's good. No, no, I really, I really had a, I had a great experience and. Um, and, and the movie didn't find a didn't really find a big audience. Okay. And what you really want to do after your first film mm-hmm. is make another one right away because right, you just right, learned right. all of this exactly. stuff, yeah. and you want to go right into the next one. Well, getting the next one when that one wasn't a big success was mm-hmm. really really hard. And then I started picking back up writing work again, and, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. go, oh, well, maybe I can pay for my divorce if I write another <laughs> script and you know <laughs> so stuff like that. No, <laughs> but Ke- you know, Ke- even Kevin, you know, him his her first <laughs> kickoff was with Spielberg. So like, amazing. Uh, and even he mentioned that didn't do well. You know, the second one wasn't as easy to get, but yeah, we kind yeah. of pounded the pavement and found a way. Yeah. Uh, but in your case, it's like, well, this uh, this side of things is going really well. Let me right. keep doing this, and then when the right opportunity comes, I'll get back right. to the director's chair right you know, yeah but you know the thing about spielberg and you know uh, <clears throat> when i sold my after we sold my first film at mm-hmm. sundance which i sold the script for a dollar so we can because i wanted to make the movie <laughs> right, yeah. right. want to go make the movie yeah. uh so my first paid gig after sundance was for steven spielberg really wow. for what for what uh, uh i wrote i wrote a movie for him called uh, little green man and it didn't it didn't see the light of day but what happened i was at sundance and he called and said hey i hear they're talking about this movie you made and i, I want to see it uh-huh and uh and he goes, uh, you know, I'd like, and I go, oh, absolutely. You know, when we get back, you know, you say, and he goes, no, no, I want to see it tomorrow. And we're like, well, we had two copies, two film copies that two we were carrying reels, around. Two 35 our, millimeter prints. Yeah, and we were like, we have eight more screenings. He's like, that's all right. I'll send my jet in the morning and then I'll, my jet will bring it back to you tomorrow night. And you're like, wow. Oh, you're like, oh, we live on the same planet, but a different world. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so Spielberg to say, like, I'll send my jet for a film reel. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly right. But, but it was amazing. And so he watched it and then he said, you know, can I can you come see me when you get back to L.A.? And I oh, went wow. to go see him. And it was amazing. And you know what? I'm going to I'm going to talk about this later on today when I'm doing a panel. But yeah. Steven Spielberg taught me one of the most important things I've ever learned about filmmaking ever, ever, ever. Because when I went to go see him, and then he, uh, he hired me. Mm-hmm. Well, I got a funny story, but, but he hired Please. me. Please. When I went to go see him, I thought, I'm going to the Emerald City. Mm-hmm. I'm going to where all the ideas are going to be genius. It's going to be this amazing thing. You mean Amblin or yeah, yeah. specifically? Yeah, okay. yeah. So we're, we were sitting at Amblin. We're sitting out in the courtyard, and it's all Santa Fe looking. You know, it's all <laughs> nice and stuff, and we're talking. and. Was it still because Kevin told us? I, I always thought he was based out of Universal. By the time it was Warner's, was no, no, he, Warner's? This, no, he was he was on he was on Universal on the Universal yeah, lot yeah, already that's at that point. Okay, okay, okay. But what, what I was going <laughs> to say is, but what I learned from Spielberg is, and I'm going to tell this to every filmmaker I make. Yeah, yeah. His ideas are not better than any of your ideas. Not better than any of our wow. ideas. His genius is he doesn't have any ego in his ideas. He's yeah. looking for the best Point. idea. So when we were working and he would say, well, what about this? And you go, uh, you know, right away, uh, I'm not, uh, okay, next, let's get the next one. What's the next one? Oh, wow. And then after a while, you could just go, Stephen, that's really stupid. He goes, you are absolutely right about that. Let's get another one. Wow. That's his genius. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I want to tell people is his ideas aren't better. They're different. Sure. But he's looking for the good one and he doesn't care who it comes up with it. That, yeah. I think, and is And he doesn't genius. live and die by every no, word no. he says. And that is an anomaly. Yeah. in Hollywood because yeah. most Absolutely. people are like you have to do it my way because they have to have the yeah. right. this is why you hired yeah, me yeah. And for so my that, voice that was whatever. like the biggest that thing yeah. and I want to <laughs> encourage people going oh they're really no they're not the good ones are open to to everything I, I, I want to hear more about this but it, I want to touch on something you pointed out because the, we tend to be very real on this podcast yeah, because yeah. we want filmmakers to know that it's beautiful and we love it and we love cinema and we torture ourselves because we love it yeah. but 
in the in the vein of being real, can you talk about going through this amazing experience and then going through the fact that some people are just going to stick it in the drawer for however long? Because that's just that's just the writing life. Right. That's right. Can you can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things is, uh, and I was I was so excited, but Stephen probably had. 50 of me working on 50. Including crop. Kevin. Right? Exactly Kevin, right. right. And and just trying to see, and there's only so many years in a lifetime. So so it's whatever. And it's one of those things where I think I, I, I worked on for him like for three years, but it's the one that becomes ready at the right time sure. for his schedule. Yeah. And then the rest, you know, then by then he's moved on. He's at a different place. Yeah. He's looking for something else. He's looking for something else. I don't have a bad word to say about no, it. It was yeah, a yeah. great, great experience. But by the time we got the script kind of where he wanted it to be, he was Ready to do. Okay. Was the op shoot? It was the op shooting Jurassic Park. It was the op shooting. Oh, do you know what? You know, what? I've killed so many brain cells since then. I don't <laughs> even remember. <laughs> I don't remember one. But uh, but he was lovely about it, and he was like, you know, I'm going to do this other movie, and then I'm I'm kind of thinking this now, and it was just one of those things where. But y'all left off on terms where you could say, Oh my hey, god, Stephen, I got a script. Oh my know? god, he's been the best. He's just. And you live in LA, so you, I'm sure you bump into him from time to time. Oh yeah, I bump him at the Seven Eleven all the time. <laughs> 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 but I'm sure. I, I mean, it. Steven, it's like 3 a.m. Um, he's picking correct up a me if I'm wrong. I should know this, but but Pause of Fury was made to be DreamWorks. You no, never, no, 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 no. Or... Pause of Fury, and and this is really, it's, I think, such Pause of Fury is completely independently made. Wow, completely Whoa. independently financed, which is almost impossible. Yeah, to do. for animation. So yeah. I give a lot of credit to the producers and the directors that put it all together. So uh, it's one of those movies, and you can always tell it's independently financed because at the beginning you see the logos for like 15 different production companies. Right, oh, right. 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 Like when is the movie going to start? <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, here's In another production scenario. company. Yeah, here's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. But uh, so and then so the completed film Paramount bought Paramount. So okay. it was one okay. of those things where the movie was completed and then they shopped it and Paramount right, right. Paramount okay. bought it. Yeah. So uh, which means there was times where we slowed down because we didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. We had to let people mm -hmm. go and then we oh. got money again right, and we kept right, going right. on. So it was a long thing. So and that, I I just it always fascinates me and and I think people need to know this that they don't do their homework already to know that like. People like you have worked on on these big things or worked with big people. Uh, um, Rob, in Rob's case, he's made some of the most legendary animated yeah. films in history. Right. Um, and even f working for Disney at a time where Disney was just oh. the renaissance of yeah. Disney animation. Um, and you still have to... You still have to sing for your supper. I mean, it's yes, just, it course. doesn't matter who you are. You oh, still have to do it. Even Stephen, I'm sure. Right. I mean, to a certain degree, I mean, he gets to call the shots, right? But right. but to a certain degree, he's like, well, I, uh, this is the budget for the picture, and I have to make compromises here, there. And Absolutely. You still have to pound the pavement. Right? Absolutely. But you know, and and you you know you probably know this, but. It is it is nice to work on the big pictures because you can pay your rent, you know, and you can you know have it eat a steak or something like that. It makes it easy. But the fun ones are the little ones. Yeah. That's where the fun is. It's yeah. just it's, it's just such that. a pleasure, and I have so much more fun trying to solve a problem because there's no money uh, than getting more money to throw at it. And you know, people yeah. like Rodriguez and and Tarantino say that that you know. The lack of resources sparks creativity. It's fantastic, and and it's true. I mean, that's how that's that's how they roll it's their fantastic. bones. <laughs> oh, absolutely, it's fantastic. And and I, I tell people all the time, my favorite times on a set, it's two a.m. after a sixteen hour day, and you have a problem, and it has to be fixed by the morning. But, and you get this group of tired people that are from all walks of life yeah. and all backgrounds, and they're all in the boat rowing together yeah. to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then some PA comes by and says something funny and you go, oh, well, we should do that. That's, and everybody goes, that's, that's, that's yeah. what we're doing, look at that. And, yeah. and then you're writing it down on a legal pad yeah. and they're making copies and yeah. the actors are, it's, the, it's just the best. And you strike right? me as that. the guy, you strike that. me as the guy uh, that, will be kind of the life in the room and say like guys we gotta we gotta do this like come on let's yeah, let's, exactly. let's get you know yeah because because there's not a lot of negative vibrations is also coming through and people are just tired oh, and they're frustrated but it sounds I like you'd be like guys come on i'm right. really it's really funny because uh i'm kind of a wreck when things are good but when things are bad i get really calm and really focused and kind of oh, like okay. sad about it you okay, know okay. and so i become like i, I always call myself the goat because you know the thing with goats and horses Mm -hmm. You know, all those thoroughbred horses, Kentucky Derby, they put goats in with them because horses are really high strung and nerves. They put goats in it because it just calms it them just down. Calms them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I always say, like, you know, I used to have a shirt I wear on set called The Goat. And so when everything everybody got wild up, I just go over there and go, what's going on, man? Everybody says, oh, greatest of all time. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I'm just yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me and Tom Brady. That's the other <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so yeah. let's, since we touched already a little bit on it and, and you're here for the screening, yeah. uh, Paul Spiri, tell yeah. us about that experience because oh, yeah. you're, you're, 
clearly, very clearly a comedy guy and to work with somebody or yeah. adapt something, uh, Blazing Saddles and Mel Brooks. Yeah. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that so, experience. Um, yeah, I'll tell you. How did you come on the project? First of all, first of all, there's no time limit. We can talk. No, about yeah, 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 absolutely. So, so, no, so it's really so. Uh, what happened was uh, there's a, a producing couple, uh, Yair Landau, and uh, and his wife Susan Purcell, and they wanted to do a. Um, there were so many Asian films that we've co-opted, like Seven Samurai became The Magnificent Seven, uh -huh. you know, and, yes, and they yeah. said, wouldn't it be nice to take like an American film and let the Asian community co-opt it? So they were looking for like a Western or, yeah. you know, something that was kind of Americana, but they wanted something funny. And so they hit on Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles. And, uh, and, uh, and they were like, look, all the stuff that Blazing Saddles was saying, look how stupid this is uh -huh. at the time. Has not changed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so that's a problem. So they go, you know, maybe we can. They, so anyway, they went and pitched it to Mel Brooks, and Mel Brooks went, "That's a sugar nut idea. Let's do that." <laughs> and so then they had what they call a bake off for writers. So they had like forty something writers come in and pitch. Wow. What they do with it? And I remember I followed two guys with a guitar that went in and sang songs, and I went, "Oh, I'm fucked, man." Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 man. I just wrote some jokes. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but what what I pitched was I go, "Let's write an R rated movie and then pull it back down uh, to." Okay. Okay. And uh, and so I got the job. And Which is something that, like, I feel like the more I watched something like Shrek, yeah, it's exactly what it is. It's this R-rated kind of and undertones, you, and then they and then draw it back it all, yeah. enough for kids. You put it all back. <laughs> yeah. And so, anyway, I pitched the – there's a long pitching story with Mel, which is horrible. And, and I, we left the meeting, and I said, Mel Brooks hates me, oh. hates me. And they go, don't worry about it. He hates everybody. <laughs> So, uh, and so, so, but here's an interesting animation story. Yeah, so yeah. one of the rules of animation is it's animation because it has to be, mm. you can't tell the story live action. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's animation because it has to be. So, so the, you can be as, you know, yeah, wild you, you as can you go can anywhere in the world, yeah. but it has to be, it's, you know, talking bugs, talking uh -huh. animals, talking, you know, it has to be. Sure. So Shrek has to be. So when we started working on it, because Mel had a real vision, of how he wanted it done, it was animated people. Right. And we worked on it for a couple of years. And we were like, I think we're breaking the rules of animation. We're doing. And so we met with Chris Rock to play uh -huh. the lead. And Chris Rock said, I really like it, but I got two kids. And if it ain't bugs or animals, man, yeah. they ain't going to go. And we were home going. Well, I mean, he comes from Madagascar. Yeah, and exactly yeah, right. And we're like, you know, I think I think the universe is like saying, so, mm -hmm. you know, we cha we thought and we thought and we thought. And we finally, we changed it to, you know, dogs and cats. Right. And we made it, you know, but we still kept the, it's the same message. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. one that's not like the others. And now, had Mel done anything in the animation world? Oh, yeah. Uh, he was one of, he's uh, one of, he plays Dracula in the, in the, uh, Transylvania, Trans Trans oh, Trans Hotel yeah, yeah, Transylvania. Yeah. Hotel Transylvania. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, his, specifically his films or something he wrote or something. I don't. No. I don't think that there's. No, no, no. He, this is. Uh, yeah, this is his first, and so. And was he calling the shots? Was he saying, "Okay, this is this is"? I mean, I know he's executive producer. I know he's credited as a writer, but. Yeah, yeah. No. So uh, with Mel, like the first drafts that were sent to him, mm -hmm. I would get called in. He goes, "You're ruining my masterpiece." Oh no! Yeah, really? You're ruining my masterpiece, and I was just because first of all, he's a he's a god. You know? By the way, I'm sure. It wasn't just you. I'm sure the other writers. Oh had, no, had, no, well, no! I was, I was the only writer because all the other writers credited were the original writers on. Um, they on said, yeah, it's Richard Pryor's credited yeah, on this. Yeah. And on Richard, this film. Richard didn't even come back from the dead. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, but we got to a point and we started where we could start recording actors, and and we wrote a part oh, for Mel specifically because okay. we wanted him in the movie. And when he came on the stage and started recording lines and. He, people were laughing and stuff like that, then the, his whole world, because he went back to the performer, his whole world changed going, oh, wait a minute, this is not, it's not bad, it's not oh, terrible, it's not. great. great. And um, I, 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 I wonder, is it, and you can be as honest as you want in this, yeah. in this question. Never. Oh, right, great, no. <laughs> um, what, did you have a stay of execution because of Rob? Or did, cause, cause Mel could have easily said, let's get no, three other writers no, or, you know. No, you know what happened was, um, it's a real part of Hollywood. No, no. They'll fire people left no, no. and right, and, so, and they don't and care. So what happened yeah. was, like, on the very first day when Mel, I knew he hated me, Mel said, uh, Mr. Stone, there's a huge difference between what's funny and what's merely interesting. I'm funny, and you're merely interesting. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and so, so we were going through it, we were going through it, we were going through it. And then, now, is that a compliment for you, oh, or is God, that a no? Because no, you want to be funny. And then, and then right after that, he said, so, Mr. Stone, what are you going to do after this meeting? And I said, well, Mr. Brooks, I'm going to a bar. What are you going to do after this meeting? And uh, he goes, well, I might go see my grandkids. And I go, well, I'll be drunk before you get there. <laughs> and uh, but it, what I was going to say, but after a while, when we were doing the records and uh -huh. the script started, you know, you're on your 15th draft of the script and it's really becoming something. Yeah. 
I got called into his office and we were sitting there and he was real, he was real serious. And he said, so you're the guy. And I said, what? And he goes, you're the guy that I said was merely interesting, right? And I go, yeah. And, and he looked at, he came over and he just put his hand on my heart and he looked at me and he smiled and he walked out of the room and, and that was as close to we're good. Ah, and like, and okay. I was like on air, I was on air. Cause Mel Brooks, like I said, I can, you know, I'm in, the, I'm in the club, approval, you know, I can yeah. be in the club and it was great. And he's been nothing but, he was nothing but a joy after that. Oh, He'd be man. calling like, you know, what can I do for the movie? Who, oh, what, what, put me fantastic. on, put me on the Tonight Show. Let's go wow. talk about the film. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels like, you know, we're, we're talking about his arc on, on Curb Your Enthusiasm recently. Yeah. And like, it seems like after Pause of Period, I don't know the timelines in terms of what was yeah. made first or how he was developing, but he just got the world of uh, history of the world yeah. part two. Like, it seems like he got a, no, a, a, no, a, he's a, like having like a fifth wind or yeah, something. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> it seems like he picked it back up. Yeah, and it's funny, uh, you know, He's almost 97 now. And yeah, it's crazy. And when you work with him, like he can, in short bursts, he's Mel Brooks. Uh, in short bursts. In short bursts. And you got to give him, like, even that he, the fact that he has a short burst is yeah. amazing. <laughs> I, I don't even have that. And yeah. you have to give him the floor at that point. Oh, of course. And you let him go, let him go. But it's funny, like, when you when he's recording with the directors, he directs. <laughs> he doesn't give a F. <laughs> so was he, was he in the studio? Where did you guys animate? Or who, who how did Well, you it was it? animated in Montreal. Okay. And, uh, but we did, like, all the, well, we did all the records for the L.A people in LA and then mm. we you know, I would go to London to record like Ricky Gervais oh, and then right, we right, recorded right. Michael Sarah in New York so we were always flying oh, somewhere wow, to record wow, wow. somebody okay. we went we were very very adamant on we wanted to cast the film like uh the the uh, command deck of Star Trek mm. so you had Sulu Chekhov, Opura, <laughs> yeah. Spock, wow. Scotty. And so when you look at, you know, Pause of Fury, yeah. we've got Sam Jackson, we've got <laughs> Michelle Yeoh, yeah. we've got Asif Manvi, we've got, you know, Fluffy, we've got uh, Gabriel Iglesias. Yeah, so that's right. we wanted, we well, wanted he's to. in LA, so at least you yeah, got yeah, to so get no, him there. <laughs> oh, I know. I really want to go see his VW collection. Oh, uh, it's like a museum, see. right? Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've met first. him a couple of times. He's fantastic. <laughs> right. He's always been a sweetheart, yeah. I got, there's a funny Michelle Yeoh. Uh, because, you know, God bless her, she just won the Oscar and, <laughs> and she's fantastic yeah. and beautiful yeah. and everything. But uh, when we were recording her, you know, there's there's a big fight sequence where her character fights. Right. And so we get to the end of it and we go, we need to do, you know, you have to record the efforts of the fight, uh -huh. you know, and we're like, okay, Michelle, we're just going to, like, you're fighting. A grunt pass. Or grunt pass. Yeah, yeah. So she starts grunting and she's doing this. And then after a while, she's getting into it. And now she starts throwing punches and she's grunting. And she's throwing punches and she's screaming. And now she's kicking over the microphone, <laughs> kicking <laughs> over the microphone. And we're all going, Oh fuck! She could kill all of us right now. She could <laughs> yeah. totally yeah. kill us. And she's like this big. <laughs> yeah. like, oh my god! And she's gone on record, by the way. Like, like she's she's good friends with Jackie Chan, and she, her and Jackie oh, train together. And she's like, she cha she's like, I'm the only one that could kick Jackie's ass. Oh my god! Like, that she said sense. this. It's am <laughs> yeah. She's amazing. I was so happy for That's her because she's awesome. so lovely yeah. and yeah. smart and just fantastic. How was the the? Um, because a lot of a lot of people, it's, been, I'm, I, it's so impressive what you all pulled off. Because, uh, like you said, independent. But you got all these major stars to be a part yeah. of it. But animation, you know, people, stars will think of animation like, okay, I recorded the script for two hours and then that's Oh, that's my not. God, no. But you got, how was the reception in terms of them being able to promote the film and them being able to, like, really say, hey, whatever you guys need was. Yeah. Um, were they champions of the film as well? Yeah, were they, you know, they, they were. They were. Uh, so it's, it's funny. The biz, We're talking about the business changing. And we might as well talk about right. it. So yeah. Paramount bought the film and, and released it. Mm-hmm but didn't support the release. Oh, and man. so we're like, what's the deal? And, and this was during the pandemic. No, no, no well, and this was last summer, last summer. Last, last summer, yeah. last summer. And last so, summer. and the deal, is, the deal is Paramount bought it for Paramount Plus. Mm. The release was advertising oh, for Paramount Plus. So and so they weren't interested in doing prints and, you know, P&A yeah. worldwide. They weren't interested in yeah. doing a big, but that, that's, 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 relief that's, and all yeah, that. exactly. So there was no, press tour for right. the for the actors right. it was not you know none of that Crazy. stuff so just um, to promote their but no, it's important to note because you're right. The industry is changing, and it seems like at best, uh, films playing at a theater, no matter how big it is, unless they're making billions of dollars, they're they're a two week commercial for you to go watch it at home. Yeah, I mean for your. Yeah, and it's funny because you know when you when you're in the film, but you know sometimes people go, oh, that was a big bomb, and you're like, you're completely wrong. It's, it was it was. A, all these businesses. So I worked on a film that Miramax bought, and um, and and they bought it for a big chunk of money. Okay. And it, it was in the press. And then what Miramax did, they <coughs> sold the overseas rights for like four times what uh, they paid for it. Sure. And then they made DVD and VHS deals for like three and four times what the. So okay. Paramount. I mean, Miramax was. Maybe what film was 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 this? Or, or you this was Happy Texas. It was Happy, Happy Texas. Happy so Texas. Paramount was like. 
uh, I mean, uh, I keep saying Pyramid. Uh, Miramax, Miramax was Miramax, a, yeah. uh, I need to drink earlier in the morning is what I need to do. Because <laughs> this is, this, whatever time it is, oh, it's too man. late. Austin, I'm no, no. Back right. there. Right. <laughs> so, so Miramax was 40 million ahead mm. without having to release the movie. Mm. And mm. so, so. And that, that was their formula. Yeah. Of course, right, of course. Yeah, was, and so, was, so we had a contract that said, you know, it was going to, the first week would be on 200 screens or whatever. Well, the director pissed off Harvey Weinstein and Harvey Weinstein just went, F you and released the movie on nine screens because they had mm. 40 million in the bank. I don't need to spend I another yeah, yeah. penny on the thing. And I remember calling the president, I, and I should probably not use names because I'm going to get sued. No, yeah. But I, I remember calling the president of Miramax going, uh, what, what's going on? I have a contract that says it's going to be on two screens. And he said, sue me and hung oh, up the phone. Oh, what a sheet. And so, so, so you read the because press. Because they know they can drag this out. Okay, and you're well, what am I going to do? Account. What am I going to yeah. do? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, so the amazing thing is, you know, even all this time later, you read articles going, oh, you know, Miramax really got screwed. They way overpaid for this crappy movie. <laughs> Except they made $40 million exactly. on it. Exactly. They don't know. Right? And so and people they paid don't three for it or the, whatever. Yeah. 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 People, so the people don't understand the business sometimes. Mm. It's not that the movie fa failed. It was like, they, it was a business decision. No, no, I need to know, did you did you deal directly with Harvey in any capacity or did you? Oh, I, I, I spent lots and lots and lots of time with Harvey. Really? Yeah, lots Are, of time. Can you talk about that or is that something that? No, no. Um, look, uh, you know, to Harvey always amazed me because... Because, for instance, to Tarantino, he was a father figure. To other people, yeah, yeah, he was no, a monster. No, no, so no, no I've got, and, and he's both. And he's both. <laughs> and and, 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 and it, if I have time, I'll tell you the, the thing. Please. Is, um, Harvey will look you in the eye and lie to you. Mm. And you know he's lying. And Harvey knows that you know he's lying. Jeez. And he lies stronger. <laughs> and then you walk out of the room. But here's the deal. He, he's a monster. Mm -hmm. and, and we were. I was going back and forth to New York all the time. When we were going, you can't go upstairs right now mm. because no mm. one can be on the floor because Harvey's taking a meeting and when all that stuff was going on. Mm. But I will say this, to be completely fair, back in the day, you talk about like the Warner Brothers and the MGMs back in the heyday when they were the yeah. studio heads. And those guys were monsters, but they yeah. loved movies. Right. Harvey loves movies. Yeah. Okay. And he would go, oh, you know, it's like that 1936 German film where they did it. Or it's like the 19... What, what, but he loved movies. And the problem in the studios now, they're business people. Yeah. They're not movie people. They're I heard a, I heard a story that when, when Scorsese did Gangs in New York with Miramax, that that Harvey passed on a lot of it. And and Marty, you know, wanted something in his contract stated that Marty had to sit Harvey down and screen films for him. And he's like, I'm glad he made me do that. Like, I, know, I, see, I know, I know, <laughs> so I know. I, I see what you're saying about So you him. want to be completely fair, but yeah. you know, it, it, it doesn't excuse any, No, not in the slightest, not in the slightest. But that's important for people to know too. Right. Like yeah. if you, you dealt with him a lot. And and of course he was the indie king of the 90s and the 2000s, right? I mean, Unbelievable. so, so right. yeah. But here, here's the, $24,000 question. Where's, where's his brother? Yeah, what I've been wondering to, that what too. Happened to Bob? <laughs> what happened to Bob Weinstein? Because he, he sure went off the face of the earth yeah. when all this went down. Yeah, he hasn't been producing anything. He's been no. out of the news. Yeah, that's yeah. I've been wondering that too. Where did Bob go? Where, what, a, what happened to Bob? They had, <laughs> they had a big fight because, you know, Bob who ran Dimension, Dimension made all the money. Dimension, yeah. I and remember, Harvey yeah. won all the awards, but we, his movies didn't make money. We spoke to Elizabeth Avian, who did uh, produced every Robert Rodriguez film and then some. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, you see, I dealt with, with Bob on Dimension. They, most of right, Rodriguez right. films were Dimensions. So I dealt with with Bob right. and Bob was always a sweetheart and Bob never approached me in any way. Yeah. Like, I met Harvey and he was a monster, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, Bob yeah. wasn't. Oh, oh, this is her story, right? So we were like, wow, no, that's interesting. That's, that's interesting. That's, that's interesting. So, uh, you know, at the, uh, and maybe you know the story, but at Happy, we did the first screening at Sundance, Happy okay. Texas. And uh, it was 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning in a, in a blizzard in the library, which sounds like a clue game, you know, <laughs> you know, where did Colonel Mustard get killed? But anyway. But there's uh, peak times, yeah, right, yeah, at yeah. Sundance, and that's not. No, 11, 11 right. o'clock in a yeah. blizzard on a Sunday morning was not a peak time. But, uh, okay, I'll, I'll back, back up just a little bit. Yeah, yeah please. So, so uh, when, when I, I was waiting tables when when we started to make the movie. Wow. And the director was selling two pays by phone. Two pays. And we both quit our jobs to go make this little movie wow. that we raised, you know, we raised the money to go make. And then, and then, so, and we end up, we go to, who's, who's the director? Uh, Mark Ilsley. And he's, he's not in the business anymore. Oh, okay. okay. Um, but, uh, anyway, so we go to Sundance and, you know, we don't, we don't have a dollar, mm. we don't have a dollar between us. And the movie starts and about f five minutes into the movie, 
you know, Sony Classics was about, we'll give you $4 million for the movie. And then somebody comes over, we'll give you $5 million for the oh movie. We'll give you, and it starts, it starts going like that. You hear all the stories about people making ca- contracts on napkins at oh, Sundance. Oh, 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 like, oh. So, so Cassie Nelways was our, uh, was our, our rep on the movie. And he just stood in front of him and said, they're watching them. They haven't seen the movie with an audience. They're watching the movie. Guys, get away. And so we watched the movie and it was kind of crazy. But, uh, a couple of the Miramax executives, Harvey was in LA getting dressed for the Golden Globes. And they called him at the Peninsula Hotel and they said, Harvey, listen, and they just held up their phones Whoa. and everybody was laughing and screaming and uh-huh. applauding and stuff like that. And then somebody just came over and said, can we just hand the phone to one of the filmmakers? And they handed the phone to the director and Harvey said, don't sell that movie, I'll be there tomorrow. So they put us in a condo and like locked us in a condo and <laughs> they did. And then. <laughs> Distributors were throwing rocks at the windows. No trying to get way. It, it, was, it was crazy. It was like being a beetle for a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's how it sounds like. It was so nuts. And so Harvey gets there the next day, and we went up to this hotel, and we got locked in this suite, and we were there uh, like all you know, all evening, all night into mm-hmm. the early morning, and and Miramax bought the movie. I would assume that that's not the only film they bought. Uh, oh, oh no, 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 no! I mean, uh, at yeah. Sundance. I mean, right. uh, because but it was, I think it was Harvey the biggest was... sale in Sundance history oh, when it happened. Wow. Yeah. What year was this? Ninety nine. So, wow. so Harvey learned his lesson on, on, off of Clerks because yeah. he passed on Clerks like three times, Ooh, and right. it was one of his Miramax guys who was like, "You need yeah. to sit and watch this movie." Yeah. Um, and then I think he just learned yeah. his lesson like, "I I need to pay attention." But it was I so funny so because we came out early in the morning from the meeting, and the director and I went to a Denny's and we got breakfast because we were going to splurge because we had sold our <laughs> <laughs> at Denny's. Get the moon over my hammy, man. Denny's let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. awesome. Wow, that's amazing. That's an amazing. Story. So I mean, funny. Um, no, and again, I didn't mean to spend so much time on, on the Harvey from no, no, that's no, obviously no, a big. It's a story. You know, yeah. you know, people people are interested. So yeah, no, that's fantastic. Now, can you can you tell us a little bit about what what you're working on now? Anything that we can know about just yet, or yeah, you know? not really. Uh, not really. I'm working on three things. Um, I'm uh, and I can't really talk about any. I'm working on a little uh, heist movie that would film in southern New Mexico. Oh, nice! Uh, nice. Little, yeah, a little heist movie with college students. You know, they get nice. in way over their head, which is kind of fun. <laughs> That's super cool. uh, and then uh, I kind of pursued this western novel for twenty plus years, and oh, the rights okay. came up again in the fall. And so I talked to the rights holder, and I'm going to adopt this western novel, oh, which is awesome. I'm really it's a huge giant epic. Yeah. Completely different. I'm very excited about that. And then, um, and then I'm working with a director on a zombie love story. Oh, cool. Is there, awesome. is there any genre that you haven't touched that you want to touch? Uh, lesbian porn. <laughs> <laughs> Told you all. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I've been pretty. So uh, I do a lot of comedies. Griffin and Phoenix is a drama, and I'm really mm-hmm. proud of mm-hmm. it. You know, because there's all there. There is comedy in tragedy, uh, yeah, and, yeah, so, yeah. and so I think it does a nice job of doing that. Um, I, I like. To, I'm, I'm happy to do a big western because I've always kind of wanted That's to. Wonderful. But mostly, the only thing I care about is characters. Sure. I don't care yeah. what genre they're in. I just want yeah. really interesting characters. And I want to tell you, as an actor, uh, I really pride myself on. I refuse to write an under five that doesn't have something going on. I refuse to, and that they don't get a funny line yeah. or a funny bit or a funny yes. moment because I always hated going up two more cups of coffee and then off the set. And like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. By the way, you need to use them in, in your next picture. This is yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. He's been yeah, an actor for most of my life. Oh, yeah, no, I, can, I can see it being shot up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to ask, uh, we didn't have a chance earlier. There was too much interesting oh, things so to hear. I'm so no, sorry. No, 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 no. I was just going to say, uh, like with comedy and uh Writing for animation, did did you feel like there was this bigger flexibility compared to like the other things you had written? Like, yeah, you know the funny thing the thing about animation is that you have so much time because mm-hmm. it takes mm-hmm. years to make an animated yeah, yeah. movie. That's so true. so which is kind of great because you get to keep experimenting. Were you just writing live action in between? Yeah, I mean something that you <laughs> yeah. recently got produced. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, what, when you're on a studio film, you can't do anything else because mm. they're 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 buying your yeah. heart oh, and yeah. soul. Oh man. But yeah, um, but the, one of the problems with that is you get to something that's really great, and then time passes, and then the studio or the producers start wanting to change it because it feels old now and you oh, go because they, they, they've that. heard it over and over and you're like no no that's still, still great works. like an yeah. audience hasn't seen it yeah. yet so let's don't and so people start changing just to change and that's that's a death it's just death right, for a right. person and so I told somebody the other day I worked on a movie at Sony and I wrote the script and I turned it in and everybody was like you know, it's great. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. And right away, you go into studio development, right? Sony Animation, or yeah, studio? Sony Animation. Okay. And so, so all the all the studio heads start, and you start doing drafts for the studio heads and mm. drafts for the studio, and it starts becoming 
not the movie you wrote. And then all the studio heads get fired and they bring in new studio heads who start giving you their notes on the thing. Yeah. And so I worked on one that we worked on it for like four years. And then fun, one, someone goes, I like the first draft the best. Can't we just go back to the first uh -huh. draft? And you're like, oh my God, shoot me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the name of the game, yeah, right? No, Especially as a writer, I know, right? But, I know. And, um, and again, you're lucky. You're lucky to have a. You have to remember gratitude, man. Gratitude. Yeah, yeah, you're lucky. Yeah. You're so lucky. That's that's huge. That's yeah. huge. Um, so, I mean, I'm looking forward to. It. I know you can't talk about a ton of this, but uh, I'm looking forward to your next yeah. work. Adam. Oh, thanks. We have one more question for you. Um, is there any advice you have for storytellers who are just coming up, or maybe even do they've been here a while and and they're thinking of giving up? Anything that you've picked up along your way that you can. You know, the biggest thing is, uh, you know, I'm I'm always like, don't give up because usually. If you just give it that one more year, that one more script, that one more, that's the one, right? Uh, you, because you've done your 10,000 hours and right, you're, yeah, you're right. getting there. Uh, the biggest thing, like if I was tell, the biggest thing right now, if you're starting out as a filmmaker, shorts, shorts, shorts. Mm. Write your features, have them ready, short, short, shorts, yeah. because the deal is it's so hard to get someone to read a script. No one yeah. wants to read a script. But if you can do a short, a short. they'll ask you for the script. If mm. they'll go, oh, man, I love your short, what are you working on? You go, well, I just happened to have yep. yeah. this right here. And, yep. and that is the best thing. And the other thing is... Uh, That's, by the way, been proven true for us. I, I can't yes. say more outside of that, but our short, our 40 plus collection of shorts, right. they saw and then said, what are you working on? And we just turned in a script. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, and it is, it is the, it's the best calling card yeah. you can have. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, along with that, have coverage. Have coverage. Mm. What are you working on? If you start handing them a script, I go, hand them a coverage sheet. Yeah. Again, you know, think baby steps. A log baby line, steps. a lookbook. Yeah, uh, yeah, something. you know, but or, or just I know a really nice two paragraph real coverage. Like mm. pe you know, there's One places page. online you go get coverage yeah. where it's not the log line is you writing it. Right. This is somebody else writing it mm. about yeah, yeah. you know have coverage like uh, have all those boxes checked to where so they go. So you do encourage people to submit their scripts into the the every screen, yeah. every online screenwriting festival you can get into oh, submit. Wow. Okay. Every I know don't submit a script like that. Make sure that you have copywritten WGA you know, something. Yeah, make sure you cover because it, people will do yeah, bad, bad uh, things. But have all of those steps. So if somebody gets hot for that moment, mm. you know, so many times people go, I really loved your short. What have you got going on right now? And they go, uh, ooh, ooh. well, that's just enough time for them to look over your exactly. shoulder no, to no, somebody. No, no. Be ready. Like, yeah. you know, have the script, have the coverage, like have all your boxes checked yeah. so you can keep the fire going. Keep it going, yeah. yeah, yeah reasons awesome. for them to say yes and less for them yeah, to say yes. Yeah, yeah, no. absolutely right. Yeah. Because it takes a thousand people to say yes to make yeah. a movie. It takes yeah. one person to say no and the movie's done. Yeah, that's true. And you got yeah. to get all those yeses, right? Yeah. You got to get those yeses. And the other thing is I, failure is an option and you should not be scared of it because failure means you're trying. Yeah. Failure means you're trying. So... Let a thousand people tell you no. Let a hundred people tell you you suck. And go, all right, you know what? I can handle that. But then it's going to come the one person that says yes. Oh, you need one person and the whole, your whole world changes. The whole That's world it. changes. Yeah. And then, it, you know, it's, and you know this, you're miserable for a long, long time. And then you get this little moment of, <laughs> oh, this is what it's about. And then you're miserable again. You know, what the fuck? You know, it's, it's horrible. Well, if you follow this advice, you too can bump into Spielberg at 7 Eleven. Um, <laughs> no, Ed, Share the smoke. Hey, uh, hey Ed, you got a single? You got a single? <laughs> you got a, that's fantastic advice. And, yes, and again, yes. we could talk to you for hours. But, oh, you guys um, are great. But man. thank you so much for doing this. And and uh, hopefully we get to a point where, where we can collaborate also. And you write something let's for do it, us. Let's or, do it. Yeah, or, man, or, man, you know, you. we'll bring you back back out and we do something great but uh but thank you so much for doing this and we appreciate it and absolutely go check out pause of fury go check out just be, be on the lookout Griffin for and phoenix you know go read it you know is it like <laughs> on prime it, or somewhere it, it, it's, it's it's always it's out it's, it's out check it out yeah happy texas go get happy them all yeah, yeah, yeah. Go check them all yeah. out and 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 ed has been phenomenal he's always been great when we come out here so thank oh, you so awesome. much so thanks so much it. thank you guys uh, stay tuned we got a lot of uh great guests coming on the, on the podcast for the Las Cruces International film festival it's always a blast to talk to people like that because they give us Hope. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks so much, Ed, and uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks so much. Love you guys. Everybody.